It's the 2nd of January, 2006, and the day is dawning crisp and beautiful over the mountains of Billings, Montana. Conditions are clear and the visibility unlimited, the type of morning that gives Big Sky Country its name. On this first Monday of the new year, a 50-year-old pilot is preparing to fly his Beechcraft Debonair, November 1254 Zulu, from Billings to a job site in Spanish Fork, Utah. It is a routine flight for the 1,000-hour airman who holds a commercial pilot certificate but is not instrument rated. Good morning, sir. My name's Mark. My aircraft is November 1254 Zulu. Planning a VFR trip this morning from Billings to Uniform 77 near Provo, Utah. That's uh, Spanish Forks. Fork. Yeah. You remember? The pilot describes his intended route to the weather briefer. After departing Billings, he will fly south to the Boisin Reservoir VOR, then turn southwest on a course to the Fort Bridger VOR. At that point, he will avoid high terrain by following the highway down to Heber City, Utah, then fly through narrow Provo Canyon and land at Spanish Fork, just south of Salt Lake City. The three-and-a-half-hour trip will cover more than 400 nautical miles and take the pilot through some of the most forbidding terrain in the West. The weather briefer describes the outlook for the intended route, and the news isn't good. Okay, drawing a line on the chart first thing. Uh, for western Wyoming and the rest of the route, airmen for occasional mountain obscuration, clouds, precipitation, uh, mist, and fog. If are not recommended into that area, and from... Uh, Oh, southwestern Wyoming, the rest of the route, occasional moderate turbulence below uh, flight level 180. Uh, areas of precipitation for from, say, Fort Bridger area, the rest of the route, mainly uh, mixed or rain-type precipitation, light to moderate in, in intensity. The uh, terminal forecast for uh, Provo, 15 to 0, 300 Zulu, not real good. Wind 17020, gust 30. Visibility more than six showers vicinity, ceiling 5,000 broken, 8,000 overcast. After dark, deteriorating further. So the sooner the better. Well, yeah, but it's not good now. I wouldn't recommend VFR across the route. I can get, uh, can get a long ways down there and then take another look. Given the high terrain between reporting stations, the forecast is ominous. But the VFR-only pilot is determined to attempt the flight. Approximately an hour and 20 minutes after receiving the weather briefing, he radios Billings ground control and requests runway 28 left for departure. He also asks for VFR flight following along his southbound route at an intended altitude of 9,500 feet. Approximately 15 minutes after takeoff, Departure control hands him off to Salt Lake Center. Good morning, Salt Lake. November 1254 Zulu is with you 9.5. Number 1254 Zulu is Salt Lake Center. Roger, Billings altimeter is uh, 2964. 2964, 54 Zulu. For the next two hours, the flight proceeds without incident. Radar contact is lost on several occasions due to the aircraft's relatively low altitude. At 11.19 a.m., Salt Lake Center advises the pilot of deteriorating weather conditions to the south. Number 12540, Roger. Be advised, there is quite a bit of weather in the uh, Salt Lake Valley and to the south. Uh, pretty good storm system moving over right now. Copy that. Uh, right here where I'm at, uh, I can probably see 40 miles. Only like 5 over 32. Despite his confidence in the excellent conditions locally, the pilot follows up on ATC's warning with a call to flight watch on 122.0. Flight watch, flight watch, November 1254, Zulu, near Rock Spring. November 1254, Zulu, sorry, flight watch over. Uh, good morning, Flight Watch. Flight Watch is about 56 miles northeast of Fort Bridger. VFR conditions uh, put a layer above me, at a couple thousand feet above me at least. Um, en route to Provo area at Spanish Fort. Could you 
you give me some conditions along that side, say at Fort Bridger and Abington and Provo? November 540, uh, current weather condition along the route of flight. We do not get a Fort Bridger. Evanston is reporting on an automated report winds 220 at 7, visibility of 10. 5,000 scattered, ceilings of 8,000 broken. At uh, Provo, they're reporting winds 090 at 6, visibility of 10, uh, with a few clouds at 1,900, 3,200 scattered. Ceilings of 4,000 broken. A temperature of uh, plus four, a dew point of a minus one. We do have an air mat out for that entire route of flight for the mountains to be occasionally skirting clouds and precipitation. So we would have to advise you that VFR flight over mountainous terrain would not be recommended. The Evanston altimeter is 2983. Copy all of that and uh, understand the uh, uh, mountain obscuration uh, air mat. And uh, thanks very much for your help. I'll just take my way along here in uh, Evan Air 54 Loop Zulu. Go on. Yeah, November 5 for Zulu, Roger. We got a report from the, the tower. That one, the weather I gave you at Provo was a 1815 like Zulu uh, observation. Zero, 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 zero. It was the automated like observation. Provo Tower right. called at uh, 1750 Zulu, saying winds uh, 120 at 9 or visibility of 10 and light rain with ceilings of 3,600 overcast. So it does look like you're going to have some problems trying to get into Provo via law, VFR if that's uh, overcast. Is in fact at 3,600 feet over. Copy all of that, and uh, I'll just slide in there and take a peek. If it won't work, I'll slide back out. Seven there, five four zero. November five four zero, Roger. We do have air also for some moderate turbulence along that route of flight, as well as moderate icing. Uh, would appreciate pilot reports as you go along and uh, have a good flight. The pilot continues for another 15 minutes when ATC again advises him of poor weather ahead. November 1254 Zulu, uh, you can expect to encounter cloud conditions all the way to the ground approaching the Wasatch Front. November 1254 Zulu, Salt Lake. 54 Zulu, go ahead. I was on the wrong radio, sir. I copied that a moment ago. 54 Zulu, Roger. I just wanted to make sure that you did uh, were aware of the weather deteriorating along your route of flight. Uh, I do copy that, sir. And uh, straight ahead right now, I can probably see 75 miles. So uh, I'm going to take my way along there. Uh, I'm going to take my way along there. Uh, I'm going to take my way along there. 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 I'm going during a handoff from one ATC sector to another, radar indicates the pilot has descended to 8,000 feet, 1,500 feet below his intended altitude. The highest terrain in the area rises to more than 9,000 feet. His radio transmissions become garbled and broken. 54 Zulu, verify 8,000. 8,000, 54 Zulu. Verify 54 Zulu, roger. 54 Zulu, I'm going to follow over. Remember 54 Zulu. Uh, I heard the part about the interstate. Uh, which pass are you heading for? Well, I'm going to go to Evans right now, right over the interstate. And uh, if there's something up there, I'll turn around back to Fort Bridger. Remember 54 Zulu. Roger that. Fifteen minutes later, ATC loses radar contact with the airplane. The last radar return shows the aircraft descending from 7,300 to 7,100 feet. The pilot is flying southwest along Interstate 80 near Wasatch, Utah, a few miles beyond Evanston Airport. Wasatch elevation is 6,742 feet. The airplane is only about 300 feet above the ground. Another nine minutes pass. ATC cannot reach the pilot via radio but a controller manages to communicate with him briefly by relaying through another aircraft in the area. Delta 344, did you attempt to relay to an aircraft? 344, yes, go ahead. Uh, Delta 344, the call sign is November 54 Zulu. Can you see if you can raise him? Sure will. Uh, November 54 Zulu, do you read Delta 344? Okay, so hang on just a minute. Yes, sir, we've got him. Okay, Delta 344, could you ask him which canyon uh, he's going to try to fly through? Okay, uh, 54 Zulu, they want to know which canyon you're going to try to fly through. Okay, uh, Center, he says, uh, look at Heber City and Provo Canyon. Okay, Delta 344, uh, I don't know 
if he can hear me or not. Tell him I'm going to check with approach to see if either one of those are passable and uh, get right back. All right, and uh, 540, he's going to check uh, to see if either one of those is passable. We'll get right back to you. While the controller checks on the canyon conditions, the pilot continues southwest along Interstate 80. A witness in Colville, Utah, a private pilot himself, would later report having seen the aircraft flying low and slow over the highway at approximately 12.15 p.m. According to the witness, the pilot was flying at about 300 feet above the ground, the ceiling was about 500 feet, and there was light snow and sleet falling. Delta 344, Sully. Go ahead. Delta 344, can you advise November 54 Zulu? The weather department is uh, reporting level three, or correction level two and level three precip in both of those canyons, but they don't advise them to try it. Okay, sir, uh, November 54 Zulu, uh, Center advises the weather department is reporting level two and level three precip in those canyons, and they do not advise that you try it. November 54 Zulu, did you copy that from Delta 344? Center, he hasn't responded to uh, Delta 344. Uh, Delta 344, thank you. I'll see if I can get a lower altitude aircraft. Got to talk to him. Thanks for your help. ATC tries several more times to reach the pilot, both directly and via other aircraft. All of these attempts fail. The airplane is still airborne, however flying lower and lower as the ceiling drops and conditions worsen. When the pilot reaches the intersection of U.S. Highway 40, he turns south and follows it toward Heber City. At 12.26 p.m., a witness spots the airplane flying low overhead, two miles south of the intersection. According to the witness, it is snowing heavily and visibility is severely limited. Two minutes later, as two air traffic controllers are discussing the missing airplane, a single radar return is recorded from the aircraft. He's gone. This little guy, I lost him on radar right about right there, and I was trying to pass some of the weather information to him. I just almost down his code in case somebody can see him, you know, in case like, like... So you did see him once? Yeah, I lost him when he got to about right here. And he was going to try to come through this canyon, and I was trying to tell him that the weather's too bad, then don't even try it. And they're saying if he, if he wants to try to go through Provo Canyon, it's better. It's not, it's not clear, but it's better. And there's icing, and he's not talking to anybody now. You I told the uh, soup? Oh, yeah. There he is. Oh, look, there he is right there. Oh, well, he's still alive. Um, anyway, I can't, this lifeguard tried to talk to him, and he couldn't talk to him either. So, well, there he was briefly. The brief radar return shows the airplane at 7,000 feet, located about five miles down Highway 40. The elevation in that area is approximately 6,900 feet, a mere 100 feet below the aircraft. Ridge lines along the highway quickly rise to more than 7,400 feet. Shortly thereafter, the local police dispatch receives an emergency call regarding a low-flying airplane near mile marker 8. Units respond to the scene, but no aircraft is located. According to police, weather conditions are extreme, near whiteout conditions in heavy blowing snow. Radio check. 